I'm Kenneth Kinney, and thank you for joining us on another episode of An Education That Works, where every week Victory University profiles leaders in our community who've gone on to achieve phenomenal success in their careers after earning a college degree. Today's guest is a very powerful woman in our community, and that power extends in and out of the courtroom. Amy Wyrick has been district attorney since 2011, when she was appointed by Governor Hasselman, then elected to the office in 2012. She is Shelby County's first female district attorney. General Wyrick is a veteran prosecutor and attorney who has over 20 years in various leadership roles in our community. The general has received many honors for her skills in the courtroom. She's been a frequent lecturer and she's also served on various boards in our community. Let's learn from some of the ways that Amy has utilized her degree to move forward in her career. Join me now with General Amy Wyrick on An Education That Works. Here we are on another episode of An Education That Works. I'm here with General Amy Warwick, who's the DA. And Amy, I appreciate you being on the show, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. If you will, tell me a little bit about your own educational background and, and where you went with your college degree to get to where you are today. Sure. I um, am the first graduate graduating class of Dogwood Elementary School, mm -hmm. part of the Shelby County School sure. System, and then went on to uh, Germantown High School, graduated there in 1983. And then I went on to the University of Tennessee at Martin, where I received a Bachelor of Science degree in Communications and a minor in Business, and went from UT Martin into law school, and graduated from the University of Memphis Law School in 1990. And began working in the DA's office as a baby prosecutor in mm -hmm. 1991 after uh, taking the bar, passing the bar, and becoming licensed as an attorney in Tennessee. Well, did you always know that you wanted to be an attorney? And, and not that you necessarily wanted to be the DA one day, but I mean, I think when everybody thinks they want to be a, a fireman, a policeman, mm -hmm. or an attorney, you know, or a doctor, or whatever, whatever that title may be, does, is that, was the law something that interests you? Maybe not as early as Dogwood Elementary, but you know when you when you were younger. Sure. Um, actually, being a prosecutor interested me mm -hmm. more than the law did. Um, also, for a, a short time, wanted to be a veterinarian. And uh -huh. I think most little girls at some point sure. in their life uh, dabble with that. I read all of the James Harriet books when I was growing up, and right. had a great right. uh, fascination and respect for that field. And actually worked in the veterinary clinic in well, the summertime. But why a prosecutor? Well, it was one or the other. It was either prosecutor or veterinarian. And, uh, but what, what, why as a prosecutor? I mean, was it wanting to put the bad guys away? Oh, and I think um, that, I think the public service aspect mm -hmm. of it appealed to me. Um, I learned in law school how much I loved being on my feet and talking to juries and being sure. in the courtroom and presenting a case um, from the side of seeking justice and working for the community and, and speaking for those uh, that have been victims of crime. How did your education, primarily um, your higher education in college, how did that prepare you? I'm going I'm to skip uh, law school because we know how law school help pre <laughs> presents, but how, how did, when you were going through, maybe through high school, through your bachelor's degree period, how did that pre help prepare you now that you look back on where you are in your career? Even before that, I, I remember a, an English teacher at Dogwood Elementary School, Miss Theodore, who mm -hmm. just stood out of my mind as a great, great teacher, a great mentor. Uh, then at Germantown High School, I had outstanding English teachers, Lynn Taylor, uh, mm -hmm. who was a, a great teacher there. In college, um, I, I was with my major in, in communications, I was editor of the school paper, mm -hmm. spent a lot of time taking those types of classes, had great uh, professors, public speaking, those types of classes that I just I loved doing. And I was very involved in campus life, and so um, all of those experiences and activities um, even the classes that I took that you know I hated and, and struggled mm -hmm. to get through, it all goes into form uh, who you are. And well, why? And I, I think it's very interesting, especially with communications. I mean, it's natural when you're standing up. Um, you know, you got to be able to communicate well. And for anybody uh, in any job, communications is is so crucial, especially in the the Twitter age where you're where a lot of the millennials are thinking at 140 characters mm -hmm. instead of ways to really communicate with people. But why? communications um, did that why do you think that helped so much as a job as opposed to say pre-law studies or political science which so many attorneys often take sure um, 
because it's all about communication. I mean, being a trial attorney, particularly being a prosecutor standing up in front of a jury representing mm -hmm. the state of Tennessee, it's all about communicating your message to the jury sure. and using uh, persuasive language, being able to take a complex case and uh, take it down to its barest elements and make anybody understand it. So I think what you learn, um, what I learned as a communications major were, were some of those skills. The other very important talent and, and trait that good trial attorneys have to have is you have to be able to talk to anybody about very complex things. So no matter what a juror's educational background is, no matter what a juror's day-to-day -day job is, you have to be able to make them understand complex issues and, and uh, bring them down to their barest form and make it persuasive. Well, Christian education is valuable on a number of levels. Uh, so the value of the community is better educated people uh, often are able to, to perform uh, on a wider, I guess, array of levels than, than a non-educated person. Uh, without education, obviously, you may or may not have a given set of skills or a given set of values. But what education causes you to do is it causes you to develop uh, cognitive skills, communication skills. It forces you to evaluate what your values are. You know, everyone has values, everyone has morals uh, and some sort of code by which they determine good and bad behavior. But uh, over the course of an education, and particularly a Christian education, uh, it forces you to have to kind of come face to face with your values and ask a lot of tough questions. You know, am I really valuing the right thing the right way? It forces you to compare your values to the values of others, other students, other writers, other people throughout history, people with whom you strongly disagree, and it kind of puts you in a situation where you learn how to articulate why you feel the way you feel uh, about an issue, and, and it forces you to kind of realize why maybe the easy choice isn't always the best choice. Uh, and so I think it benefits society as a whole because we have more educated people. They're able to think, think more deeply through issues that affect all of society. Uh, and so I think that lowers crime rates, it increases job productivity, uh, and it increases salaries. You know, the huge benefit of an education is, uh, on average, a person with a college degree earns a million more dollars over their lifetime uh, than someone without one. Uh, and so that, that's, you can see immediately the value that that would have on someone's family, on someone's friends, on someone's relatives, the ability to, to provide on a much higher level, but also the ability to, I think, lead on a higher level. That, that a, a Christian education goes beyond just job training, and it really focuses on, on who are you, what's your identity, how do you understand God, and how do you understand God's plan for your life. And the ability to think through those issues and ask difficult questions about it, I think, creates a maturity in a person. It's sort of, it's, the education speeds up that process that might take a person, you know, a decade or two on their own. They're able to kind of, in four years, kind of, take the fast track through process and through the serious issues. Well, in, a, in a way, you're, you're not selling, um, but you're, you're trying to convince people. Right. And, and I think that's such a good point because you're, you're not necessarily trying to, um, for lack of a better phrase, sell to the judge or, or sell to the, the other attorneys. You're trying to convince the people Right. This is what the evidence presents in, in complex issues. It's such a good point. And this is why this is why this is important, and this is what this means, and being able to explain things and, uh, and, and to tell a story. And that's you know because mm -hmm. you're you're now in in a in a place where you're basically um, again for lack of a better phrase playing with people's lives. I mean you're you're having to handle it with such care and being able to communicate that effectively. Mm -hmm. um, obviously makes your job that much better and a much more important message than you would have otherwise. Um, when you look back on on where you were with college, did you ever um, think that you might have benefited from something else you could have enrolled in? I mean, would, would pre-law um, or political science have helped you anymore? Or would it have made so. a difference? If, if for no other reason, um, you know, maybe I guess my advice, and we have a son in college, and our advice to him has been, if there's a if there's a class that interests you, if it is a you know Chinese poetry class from mm -hmm. the 1400s, and mm -hmm. that sounds like something you'd like to take, take it. For mm -hmm. crying out loud, don't worry so much about the hours and the time frame, and you know, will it fit, and will I still graduate on time? Sure. And, 
if it's something that interests you if, you, if you think you're curious about it, what a great opportunity you have while you're in college to take advantage of sure. those opportunities that you're not going to have again. So what I enjoy about college is that I want to expand my knowledge and I enjoy learning. I enjoy knowing more because knowing more gets you farther and that's what the main thing I enjoy about college and that you're individual. Nobody really tells me what to do. Nobody tells me, oh, you have to be at class. Like, I go to class because I want to go to class and I want to be a better individual. And I think having a degree, it's, it's nice to have that history major or whatever degree, but it's nice to be able to attain more and know more. Um, for me personally, having a degree, a bachelor's degree, is going to help me go to law school. I can't get into law school without having a degree. Going to Victory, I have built more relationships. I have connected with people more because it's a smaller environment. So I actually get to know my professors and my professors get to know me. Unlike going to a school which has a way bigger popu population. And in the future I'm going to need to know these people and these people are going to want to remember my face and are going to remember me because that's how I'm going to get somewhere. College is what opens up these places. So, you know, getting back to, to your son in college, um, I know you get advi you get asked advice a lot by people you know in the community in your church. Mm -hmm. um, what they they obviously respect the DA and the DA's opinion. What advice do you give to to all college students, whether it was your son or not? But I know you you mentored a lot of people. You've spoken to you led a lot of active uh, youth groups and and presented to them, what kind of advice do you give them um, to, you know, when they start looking at college and how that helps them in their career? Sure, um, to read. Read, 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 read. read. Uh, you know, starting at a very early age, read everything you can get your hands on. In terms of, you know, when you're in college, again, I think just uh, our son, and now we've got a daughter actually that's a junior in high school, and the, the pressure is so intense for uh, that age kids today and you know they think they're supposed to know what they're going to be when they grow up and where they're supposed to be and that's that's not it at all um, many people that find themselves in a career 20 30 years down the road never envision themselves in that field mm -hmm. but it's it's the challenge in college is to work hard do the best you can and take advantage of every opportunity I mean you're young you've got nothing but time on your hands take advantage of, of everything. Well, you know, and, and I recently said this to a, a judge I was speaking with, you know, if, we're, if more of the population um, in general, more people were more uh, better educated, mm -hmm. uh, that would obviously lighten your workload a lot. And oh, it's, it's everything. It, 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 it makes such a difference in the community. So if you don't mind, speak to that mm -hmm. and where you think that might benefit our, not necessarily our community at large, but whatever way you, you know, it does, and, and people ask us that all the time as, as prosecutors. Um, you know, I've worked here for 22 years. I've, I've handled every kind of case uh, this office has seen, and people ask us all the time, what's the number one cause of crime? What causes the crime? And it all gets back to education. It all gets back to, um, as parents, being educated about the dangers, the pitfalls, what they need to be looking out for, educating yourself on where your kids are, who they're with, what are they up to, um, and our young people educating themselves about the pitfalls and the dangers and the temptations and the reality that um, you know you, you get in trouble as a juvenile and it can follow you the rest of your life. It can keep many, many doors from ever opening. So education is such a huge part of what we do in terms of prevention. Um, mm -hmm. You know, parents can't take steps to prevent their children from being exposed to synthetic marijuana until that parent knows right. what synthetic marijuana is, right. what it looks like, what it, why do I need to be worried about it, and the kids can't know why do I need to stay away from it until somebody, you know, until we educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and I, I think as a leader, I mean, you're truly a leader. You've demonstrated nothing less than that, and you're responsible for so many people within this building alone. How how does your influence um, go to the rest of the 
the law enforcement community and, and the judges that you deal with, how can they help? Um, I'm going to say this again, lighten your workload, and lighten their own workloads. How, how can they help once they get to 201 Poplar? Unfortunately, it's usually they're sitting before a judge and, and you're, you, know, you or an assistant DA is prosecuting them. Right. How do we help them once they're here? Because you know, we, we see that with, with prison ministries and yeah. ways of trying to help people. And I don't mean literally when they're here, but when they're, once they're here, how do you help somebody who does have that record? Well, to prevent being somebody that recycles a problem over and over and over again. Right, and we that is such a, a huge part of what we do every day. You know, so many people think that a prosecutor's job is to just stand up and ask right. a judge or a jury to send that defendant off for the maximum penalty of the law. Mm -hmm. the, the first thing for most crimes and for most defendants that a judge is going to look to or we as prosecutors are going to look to in making an offer is the rehabilitative aspect of that because the law says we try to put people on probation first and foremost if we can, if the crime uh, fits that and if their sentence or if their record rather fits that. So if you know the biggest way everybody could help one another is if the first time you cross the threshold of 201, make that your last time. Learn something from this experience. Uh, for too many individuals this has just kind of become another you know building in town that you visit. It, uh, it breaks my heart to see the young kids walking around. Um, but, but learn from your mistakes and don't go back out and repeat those. Um, but in terms of uh, specific rehabilitation, we spend a lot of time and we're blessed in this community to have drug court treatment, to have great alcohol rehabilitation facilities, to have other great um, community partners that help us address uh, for some defendants what it is that's driving them to commit a crime. You know, if you've got a cocaine addiction and you break into cars to steal things, to feed your cocaine addiction, mm -hmm. the best thing that I can do as DA, the best thing that the judges and the law enforcement and all of us working together can do is send that person through the drug court treatment program. Right. Get them off the cocaine. It's not an easy program, but it's a great, great step in the right direction. And so we, we spend a lot of time working together. In order to be competitive in today's society, you need a college education, a good quality college, college education so you can succeed, not only for yourself, but for those around you. The, de the degree prepares me because it gives me classes that I need in order to help future clients and myself. There's a lot of things and preconceived notions that I had prior to coming to school. I thought that, well, I'm just going to take this class and it would be, you know, really easy to breeze through, but the information that you receive is very pertinent to being effective. It's not a fly-by-night type of thing. You need to know, the, you have the specific skill sets in order to succeed here. So those, the classes prepare you for the future and for life around you because you never know when you, that degree is going to play outside of your job. What advice can you give to young attorneys coming out of college uh, that are coming before the courts today? I know a lot of times, you know, they, they have to earn their, their stripes, mm -hmm. um, you know, they do a lot of paperwork, they do a lot of study, but at some point they get, you know, get in front of a judge and have to argue a case. What kind of advice can you give attorney, young attorneys today, uh, really of any age, um, to help them better prepare to be better attorneys? Sure. Um, to work hard, to work on the fact that your reputation mm -hmm. and your word is all we have and all we know about you for a, a pretty good time after you get licensed, after you've you know, graduated law school, taken the bar, passed the bar, get licensed, you show up brand new on the scene. Um, there are particularly, and we tell young prosecutors this uh, when we hire them in the DA's office, there are people all around you that have been doing this for a long, long time, whether it's the clerks in the courtroom, whether it's the deputy at the back door, the judge, the defense attorney on the other side. Uh, use them as resources. Do not assume that you know the answer um, and benefit from that wealth of knowledge. There's not a day that goes by, and I've, again, been doing this a long time, there's not a day that goes by that I don't ask somebody a question mm -hmm. about something 
So you're constantly learning, you're constantly challenging yourself. Um, but, but for young attorneys, it, it takes hard work to build that reputation. Um, if you are dishonest or someone that um, is not trustworthy, that message gets around pretty quickly too. Mm -hmm. It's a um, we've got a lot of lawyers in town, but it's a small bar as well. Absolutely, and the word spreads. Well, it's the same way in any sure. sort of a business, and I and part of what an education that works is is not only just you know empowering students with the education, what what they get in the books, but it's and it's not also helping. It's also helping them get the you know experience in the community with careers. But an added piece of that is preparing students with with the kind of things that keeps their reputation mm -hmm. strong, learning you know, the ethics and uh, the morals that are instilled. And I think some of the benefits you get when you're in a Christian college, obviously, is, is what we learn from from the Bible and being involved in the community that way. Sure. So, And I tell young prosecutors, you know, it's, it's a little bit different conversation for a young assistant district attorney starting out as opposed to a young defense attorney sure. or a young lawyer in a civil law firm. but. Young prosecutors are told from day one that you are a prosecutor 24 hours a day, seven days a week because mm -hmm. you're a public servant. And you have to be mindful of that. Even if you are off the clock, mm -hmm. people are watching and people are looking to us um, to be public servants and good examples and, and good mentors. And that's good advice for anybody. I mean, especially right. it, it applies to social media. Wow, exactly. And, you know, those kind of things can come back and haunt you. Yep. Uh, especially when you talk about uh, um, being a, a small community mm -hmm. of attorneys. I mean, we're a decent-sized city, but you know, you're going to run into you and right. other attorneys of, of name recognition pretty soon, yep. pretty quickly. Through the challenging courses that I'll take during. Um, college, uh, hopefully I can be prepared to take the MCAT and then, depending on that score, apply to med school. If not, then teach, because teaching is always an option. There's always going to be a need for teachers. And that's why I, I see the value of a college degree. College, enjoying the experiences, the people you meet. You meet so many different people from different backgrounds, different parts of the world, even the states, which is amazing. So you get to see why and how people act the way they do and that's another fun thing. You also get to meet uh, great friends and the friendships will last forever. So what advice do you give to colleges and universities today to help them better prepare uh, to, you know, future attorneys, um, future graduates? We've been having this conversation quite a bit. Um, from what we see, I think there needs to be an, a stronger focus on actual hands-on experience. And I know that takes time, and I know that takes a lot of people kind of uh, reconfiguring things. But particularly from a law school standpoint, um, and even college, you know, you graduate college students, you graduate law students, what does it mean to show up at work every day? What does it mean to be an employee at FedEx or a young lawyer, whatever? Um, but actually learning how to work at a job, um, show up on time, um, you know, just simple things mm -hmm. that oftentimes I think get lost in the shuffle. But again, uh, it's those communication skills. It's what we see cause more trouble with here is just people making an assumption. You know, you get an email and you think it says one thing and you do that mm -hmm. and then you find out that's not at all what your boss meant. Mm -hmm. um, don't make those assumptions. To have that, take that extra step to say, is this exactly what you want me to be doing? Um, I think another great tool, and um, I'm not sure how you teach it, is just being a self-starter. Sure. And After that's, you know, right? exactly. And if there were a class that initiative maybe... Initiative 101. Exactly. Right. <laughs> that's right. Well, Work ethic, initiative, self-starter, whatever you want to call it. But that's, um, that's such a, a blessing to, no matter, again, where you're an employer or how many people you employ, um, having those people on staff that anticipate a problem mm -hmm. or... Um, see a solution. You may, you, you may be functioning in a way, uh, your business, your, your law firm, whatever, um, your classroom, doesn't matter. 
in a way that isn't productive, and there may be a better way to do it. But having that, uh, that time and that ability to just sit and think, mm -hmm. and think of new ways to do it. How is it important for you uh, to help lead and inspire them to be future leaders of tomorrow? We've come, uh, you know, I know it's cliche, but we, we've come such a long way. When I started in the DA's office, there were just a handful of women prosecutors. Um, we weren't allowed to wear pants to court. <laughs> um, I've had four children. Uh, my husband and I have been blessed with four children, and I've had all of them while working here as a prosecutor. And when I started, um, we didn't even really have a maternity leave policy. I mean, there's just so many things that have changed in my very short shelf life here mm -hmm. in the DA's office. Um, and, and to me, it's really not about being the best female attorney I can be or the best female DA I can be. It's about being the best DA I can be, the best um, you know, parent, whatever, um, regardless of male, female. But um, the challenges are, are still there uh, in terms of um, separation of the sexes, but we have come a long, long way. Uh, now, now the women in the office can wear pants, right. and uh, many of the women in this office are some of the toughest prosecutors we have. Uh, well, and you've been a true inspiration to me, the first woman to be the DA in Memphis. And um, I mean, that's, that's a, uh, to be the first of in that role and to lead the way you have in the community has been really inspiring. Well, I want to thank you again for yes. being on at Education at Works. Thank you. Um, I continue to work and we'll try to educate more students so they'll stay out of this building. So, <laughs> yes, thank like you. It's a fair enough plan. That thank you very a, much. Good deal. Thank you. If you or anyone you know wants to be a, a lawyer one day or simply a great communicator, you want to just learn something to improve your career and possibly change our world, then I urge you today to go to an education that works com. On behalf of Victory University, thank you for an education that works. Hi guys, my name is Alexis Grace. You probably know me either from American Idol Season 8, yeah, I sang a lot on stage, or if you listen to the radio, I'm on Q1075 every day, Monday through Friday, from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock. But more importantly, the reason why I'm here talking to you today is because I'm going to be here for the Toys for Tots Music Benefit on December 6th. I'm so excited and thrilled that they've asked me to be here to perform on this stage right here. I'm going to be performing my favorite Christmas songs, some originals, and some ones that you probably already know as well. But more importantly, this event is about the children because every child deserves a Christmas, and that's what Toys for Tots is all about. So come join in on the fun and help out the kids this Christmas and have some fun singing with me December 6th for the Toys for Tots Music Benefit. Join us for an education that works this and every Tuesday at 8 a.m. on KWAM 990 as leaders in our community discuss the secrets to education and career success, as we present some insightful advice on helping you best prepare to change our world.